Hi, in this video, I want to show you how we read in an XML file. So in the last video, we looked at writing out an XML file, and what we're going to do is we're going to just we're going to read in that XML file. Um, so before you read in any XML file, you need to open it and have a look at it, and get make sure you're familiar with it. You're familiar with its tags, so forth and so on, because we're going to iterate through the descendants, and we need to know the name of the descendants. In our scenario here. The descendants are the staff members. The root is the staff, but the descendants are the staff members. And then we're going to iterate through the fields of each descendant. And we need to know what these, these, these tags are so we can load them in. After that, we'll display or put them somewhere. So that's kind of the whole goal. We'll load in a file, iterate through the descendants, and each for each descendant, then iterate through all of their fields and then display it in some shape or form or put them in some kind of memory space let's do that so we so this is the previous code here what I'm going to do is um, since I already have an XML file I can delete all of these and empty out my array and I want to just load my file and this is my XML writer what I'll do is I'll put this in a different button I'll just put in a button called XML write out. Where's my button? Button, and this can be my XML write write out. And I'll just shove all of this code in here so I don't lose it. I'll just collapse that. All right. Okay. Now we want to read in this file. And we want to maybe shove it in here, shove it into this data structure here, and then link this data structure to some data grid view. Let's do that. All right, so to read an XML file, we're going to use again the xdoc. So we're going to go dim xdoc, and as an x document equals to. And we're not going new this time. We want to load. We're going to go. We want to use one of the shared shared methods. Uh, dot load, and we're going to load an XML file that we know we have already, which is the uh, XML, which is staff of XML. All right. So we load that into this memory, uh, this this object here. Next, we 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 want to find its descendants. Now we know that the descendants are staff members. We want to find it. So we open up the file, we go, okay, let's have a look. So we're looking for star any staff member and then we will look at the fields. So we're going to iterate over the over the, the staff member descendants. For each what is it for each a staff member in X doc dot Trying to remember here, x dot dot root dot descendants, and the descendants we're looking for is staff, and it's case sensitive. Staff members, make sure it's exactly the way this XML is written. It so you can see how XML. Let's just open up the XML over here. You can see that it's capital S capital M. That's how we've constructed it previously. So we want to make sure this is also capital L. S and capital M. So for every st staff member ta uh, X element, which is which we we will put into here. So staff member one will be put in here and then goes around again. And st the active staff member goes into here. Um, but you don't have to use a. It's not like an array where you use numbers as index. This thing is iterating over it. We get. We want to get each staff member. We want to have a look at. We want to have a look at um, two elements in the staff member. So the staff member will have two elements associated with it. And if we look at our, our, our XML file, we have element name and element age. And we want, we want to access these elements. So to access it, you go staff member dot element, and then we write name. And we've got to make, and it's case sensitive. We make sure we write it exactly the way it should be. And let's just shove it somewhere. Let's just shove it in some data, uh, some variable. 
and over here we'll, we'll shove age in some uh, memory space all right great so this should extract the name and age actually I forgot dot value you need to put dot value else it will just extract the title the tags we don't want the tags we want the actual value associated with the tag we actually want to show you again the value which is him or 25 or Carol or 65 so we want to access that value and then finally what we could do is we could add these name and age into our rec and our, into our staff record so we go staff dot add new staff record and we'll just put name and age nice and that will go through each member and put it back into our staff record right here now how do we know it's in there well I could uh, put a breakpoint there and just check memory check check the staff memory well I'll put a breakpoint here first just to show you it's empty all right let's have a look at staff and notice it's empty there's zero there and now I'll just run it till this point and you notice there's three in there and if we look inside there's three there's there's our XML records we'll have we have name and age here name and age here name and age here so it, it, it works um, let's link this to a data grid view because that's something useful that you probably want to do in your projects or SAC SAT uh, we'll go into this we'll put in a data grid view D for data grid view D, 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 over here and I'll just make it a bit bigger and I'll bind it so to bind it to a data grid view we use a binding source dim bind da I call it uh, whatever I call it whatever as a binding source equals to new binding source don't even need that for this language um, then we we get the staff dot the staff the staff this thing this this one dot data source dot data source no actually it's finder dot data source I'm getting confused finder dot data source uh, can't spell again we'll put the staff in the data source of the binder then what we do is we get our data grid view data grid view one which is the name of a data grid let's just double check there we go that's the name of a data grid and uh, we're going to go dot data source equals to binder binder dot data source I think hopefully this I've been able to stuff it up all right so these three lines of code wish us luck let's see if it binds to the it binds this information to our data grid view there you go beautiful see that name age we got it so um, pretty reading it in is a little bit more simpler than writing out writing out is a little bit more challenging but reading in you iterate over use a for each loop to iterate over each staff member access the element that you're looking for make sure you access the value of the element and then add it to your staff member records list then you could bind your staff members record list to your data grid view and look at that it's beautiful so what we could do at this point is you know we could uh, then add a new person so we can go okay, staff dot add let's just add some random person uh, since I've got two males already I might I might add a female uh, let's add um, Rachel add Rachel oh you add Rachel and 
that make her um, 48. Rachel's 48. And let's try that. Let's see if it shows up. Now you notice here, um, after I bind the data grid view and add Rachel, it doesn't work. If you want to um, refresh the data grid view binding, um, I think we can uh, data source null at first. Yeah, uh, just bind it again. Uh, let's just check. We want to bind. We want to do this again. Let's, go, let's try that. Let's copy and paste that. Do that again. Binder. Of course, I should add it before I bind it. But let's just do the just just rebind. No, rebinding doesn't work. So um, rebinding doesn't work. Uh, I do remember that we need to clear it out first. We need to null it first, but null it doesn't. It's not a it's something in this language. So um, it should be nothing. Yes. All right. So we don't have to do this again. What we sh should be doing is we should go data grid view. So we just well, we shouldn't need to do that again. I'm just going to copy and paste this twice and. Over here, I'll put a nothing. So first we'll set the data source to nothing and then we'll bind it onto this data source. Now, if it doesn't work, we might have to add that line, but let's just check that. Yep, beautiful, no no, no issues there. Rachel is now there. So um, if you want to, let's say you bound it and then you wanted to add a new person into it, you'll need to set the data source of the data grid view to nothing first and then rebind it with the binder all right so you still need to do these two lines of code there and that will um, bind that bind rachel and of course we can then you know copy write this write this um record this staff record with the new rate with miss miss new rachel in this and create a a new staff xml with an extra person in there so you can load in, add someone, and then write out again. Uh, let's do that actually. So um, I'm going to write it out and see if Rachel gets in. So if, so right now I've created, I've loaded this in, I've added Rachel, I'm gonna write it out, and look at this. Staff member, staff member, staff member, here's Rachel, 48. Thanks for watching.